what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today we're going to be blasting Napalm Death's Peel Sessions from 1987 and 1988. So we have Lee Doran on vocals and Killer Shit Live Grind Madness at the BBC, the Earache Peel Sessions. Killer stuff, some of the best Napalm Death material ever recorded. And speaking of Napalm Death, we're going to be going over their first death metal release, Harmony Corruption on Earache Records. Thanks again to Garth for hooking this up. A lot of people hate on this album. I like it a lot. I like Barney's work and Benediction, and I like what he brought to the table here. Yes, this is a gigantic departure of the grindcore, you know, error, napalm death. Because a couple of stories I heard about the recording of this album and uh, pretty much the lineup and whatnot. It was uh, pretty much Mick couldn't play death metal drums. And they went all the way over to Moore Sound Studios and recorded this as best as possible. Produced by Napalm Death and Scott Burns. Recorded and mixed at Moore Sound. Recording Tampa. Artwork by David Windmill. And uh, mastered by Noel Somerville. And this has a bonus track on it, Hiding Behind, after the mighty Celtic Frost worship of Suffer the Children and pretty much throw Repulsion and Celtic Frost in a blender. And yeah, you have Napalm Death's Harmony Corruption. I think this album's great, and you have Mark Barney Greenway on vocals, Mick Harris on drums, Shane Embry on bass, Mitch Harris on guitar, and Jesse Panano, RIP, on guitar as well. And there's some classics on here where if you go and see Napalm Death live, they're still gonna blast through them live because they're fucking fun as hell to hear in that type of setting and they're just great songs. Like, you have Vision Conquest, If the Truth Be Known, Inner Incineration, Malicious Intent, Unfit Earth, Circle of Hypocrisy, The Chain That Binds Us, Mind Snare, Extremely Retained, Extremity Retained, Suffer the Children, and the CD only bonus track of Hiding Behind. This is just all fucking killer stuff, but like, I, I love the grind core error of Napalm Death, and they tried to recapture that a lot, and there's parts on here where you could tell it's like, hey, let's not disappoint our old fans, even though we're heading in this new direction. I, I think it's great, and the Celtic Frost riffs are just awesome, and it adds so much to this album. And pretty much what makes it, to me, a uh, 90s death metal classic. Like, First off, I dress like Barney Greenway always wanted to since I first you know was in the heavy metal I always used to call tight black pants and sleeveless shirts like the Metallica outfit tight black jeans were Metallica pants I just that's what I called them but I always loved this artwork and just that whole early earache Jeff Walker carcassy type vibe and I understand why they wanted to make a death metal album. Like, death metal ruled. It was getting a lot of ground during 1990, and Barney had the vocals to, you know, take Napalm Death to the next level. And, uh, you know, that next level wasn't another grind album. It was a death metal album, and I think it turned out good, but most people say, hey, the production, you know, it doesn't really work for Napalm Death, and it kind of sounds sloppy for what it is. And it is their first death metal album, but at this point in time, 
Napalm Death was already an established band, had an established fan base, so completely switching, you know, your style of music up is a ballsy fucking move. And hey, we're still going to Napalm Death shows today. They're still playing Suffer the Children, and I still fucking mosh and have fun every time they fucking play it because it's one of the best fucking metal songs ever. And I know it's just a Celtic Frost riff turned into a breakdown in the middle, but it's just so goddamn fucking fun to hear live. And same thing with If the Truth Be Known. It's just a great live song. You just want to fucking circle pit and just, you know, fucking get fucking hyped. Napalm Death's one of those bands where still they just kill it live. Like, last time I saw them play, they opened up with uh, this, but completely had it at a swan's level of heaviness, slowness, just... Yeah, I love that these guys love swans and they don't let those inspirations, you know, not show. Like, if you listen to From Enslavement to Obliteration, there's tons of swan war uh, swans worship and it fucking rules. And this album rules as well. But like I was saying, in my opinion, the A-side of what I'm holding right here, the Live at the BBC, Grime Madness, Earache Peel Sessions... This is their best fucking material. And we've been listening to the A-side, which started off with a broadcast from August 13th, 1987. That was actually when it was recorded. The broadcast was on the 22nd. And we are now listening to a recorded live session from August 3rd, 1988, which was broadcast on April 20th, 1988. And this right here is, in my opinion, the best Napalm Death material ever recorded. The second half of this A-side is unfuckable, especially when it comes to grind in general. Like, you just want to fucking thrash. I love it. Or we could pull some Todd Jones and just... Slam! Slam! And just get fucking hype. But so fucking fun. And if you don't like this, you don't like grindcore. And yeah, I'm standing by that fucking statement. But here, this is a completely different monster. I understand why some people don't like Harmony Corruption. But I also understand why some people love it. To me, this is uh, probably my third favorite Napalm Death album because, like I said, I do love myself some awesome grind and scum and from enslavement to obliteration are fucking amazing. And I don't know if I can really count this as an album because it's more or less a compilation. So let's not count that. But yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna hear the beginning of Napalm Death's death metal years check out harmony corruption and you know you might enjoy it you might not who knows but it's worth checking out it is a classic in some people's ears and minds including my own and i love that album so yeah anyways thanks for watching we were listening to napalm death and uh i was talking about some napalm death real quick you can't go wrong with suffer the children Check that song out, and if you don't like it, then, you know, you probably won't like the rest of this album. But all the way up to Apex Predator, Easy Meat. I really like this later era now of Napalm Death. Like, especially the last album, I thought was really well written and was just fucking just fun in general. And fun to fucking hear the songs live. They didn't suck. It wasn't like when you hear, like, oh, we're gonna play a new one. It wasn't like, oh man, it was like, yes! Like, fuck yeah, I love the new album. And I can't wait to hear what they have up their sleeves, because Napalm Death, hopefully they're around for another 15 fucking years and still just keep on putting out good material. Unlike some bands, Suffocation, um, who actually played a show here without Frank Mullen and without a bass player. What were you thinking? But anyways, Napalm Death. 
I just wanted to go over Harmony of Corruption in case you are new to the Napalm Death history or whatever. This is essential if you're a diehard Napalm Death fan, but this is essential if you're just a fan of the band in general and want to hear when they switched off the grindcore switch and threw on some sweatpants and hit up Florida for some fucking death metal. So get into that. Thanks again, Garth, fucking Hales, and thanks to you guys for being fucking awesome and watching these videos. And uh, yeah, party on, Hales.